In most cases, when we are faced with troubles, worrying is a reflex of our mind, and we forget that there is a higher power that is in control of our life, that is in control of each and every person on this earth, that is in control of the way the planets revolve around each other, that exists outside of our time. When we are faced with difficulties in life, praying is our last resort. When we can no longer have any control over our situation or of our mind. Do you know all the things our God has done for you as an individual? Do you understand His limitless power? Do you remember the miracles of the past that is recorded in the Bible? Do you believe in His grace and mercy? Do you believe that He is the Alpha and the Omega? Do you think of these things when you are dealing with problems or painful moments? I didn't. I used to put my limits on God. My limits were derived from my past experiences from other people, past disappointments. I placed God in the same box and thought that He too will hurt me. My ignorance in the Bible's history compelled me to doubt that God can do all things in His will. And when I made mistakes, when I chose the wrong decision, when I disobeyed, I believed that it is too late for me. That I am no longer welcomed in heaven. Are there some of you out there with this way of thinking as well? Do you find yourself thinking, God cannot heal me. God doesn't hear my prayers. I'm too bad of a sinner for Jesus to save me. I've messed up so many times. God is only good to others but me. It is time for you to rebuke the enemy out of your mind. You don't have to keep those mindsets any longer. Satan has been toying with your head so that you won't remember that you are a son or a daughter of God. You have the authority over the devil. You have the authority to cast him out of your head. Don't let him live there. Make space for our Creator. Make space for the Holy Spirit to dwell in you. Make space for Jesus to transform you. And I want to help show you the first steps you can take to rebuke the enemy's lies and start building your faith in the God that created you. Hello my friends, did you know that there is one verse that gives you four steps to having peace? These steps are found in the book of Philippians. So join me and grab your Bible and a pen and paper. Now let's grow in God's word together. The scripture says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This version is in the ESV. Now, I know I said the four steps are found in only one verse, and it is. It's in verse 6. I added verse 7 because I think it's important to remind ourselves that the God we serve the God we pray to understands our needs and knows our wants, and He is a God that can do all these things for us. But the reasons behind His yeses, nos, and maybes are because He understands our hearts and our minds, and He knows our spiritual posture from the petitions we have. But before we get into that, let's talk about the context of these verses. So, Paul wrote this letter to the Christian Philippians while he was in prison. And he wrote this to encourage them to live as citizens of heaven that are committed to serve God and one another. Paul writing this letter of faith and peace while he's in prison? That shows us that no tribulation on earth should waver our belief in God. We should always have a heart of gratitude no matter what our circumstances may be. If you think about it, there is always someone who is doing worse than you or who has less than you. Not to boast yourself, but to initiate your mind into thinking that life isn't so bad after all. If you just imagine them still praising the Lord, how then could we not worship just as much or more? Our minds should not be thinking of the negative aspect of this world. Instead, we should think of what positive impact we can create in the midst of our situations. Just see how Paul didn't pity himself and instead, he wanted to make his situation impactful and inspiring to others who feel troubled. And it does take a lot of maturity and faith to be able to put ourselves aside and think of others' souls to save. 
this is the kind of maturity I yearn to have, to endure persecution, to endure being judged and tested by others, and to still give the love and grace of the Lord. Now, the four steps of peace, like I said, is from verse 6, if you want to read the verse again. Step 1, it says, don't worry about anything. Step 2, pray about everything. Step 3, thank God for all He has done. And step 4, tell God what you need. I know it seems easier said than done, trust me. I understand the feelings of paranoia and fear well too much. But this is what God commands us to do. So these steps are what we should strive to perfect in our race in life. What do you worry about? Do you worry about your finances, your job stability, or job hunting? Do you worry about your family, your kids? Do you worry about someone betraying you, someone hurting you? Do you worry about your health or your loved one's life? Do you worry about saving someone's soul, your family not coming to Christ in due time, your kids being rebellious? Do you worry about yourself not being good enough as a partner, as a mother or a father, or even as a child? Do you worry about what others say about you? Do you worry about God not hearing your prayers? Do you worry that you won't get what you want or what you've been needing? Did you worry about what to wear today or what to eat later? Our worries. We all tend to subjectively measure them according to what we deem as important or insignificant. But worries are worries, no matter how big or small they are. Step 1 says that we should not worry about anything. Not that it means to just purposely not care about anything, but that we should surrender all of them to God. I know. This part is the hardest and the most cliche thing to say. It might even offend some people who are going through the valley right now to even hear this. But as someone who's also experienced many heartaches and trials in life, I can assure you that worrying is just us trying to control what we cannot control. I can worry about one thing for a whole decade and the situation won't change if it's not meant to. I want to make it known to you that worrying is pride. We think that we can control things when only God can do that. And pride is a sin. God hates prideful people. So us worrying is just ultimately us sinning. And that's hard to swallow, isn't it? I've been there, and I am not perfect to this day. I have a tendency to worry still here and there. That is why we apologize to God every day, as He gives us mercy the next day. Step 2 basically tells us to cast our cares to the One who has the ability to change any and every situation in 180 if he wants to. God loves us. God loves his children to basically depend on him, just like parents love it when their kids go up to them for help and think highly of them and know that their parents can face anything. Our Creator feels loved by us knowing and believing that he can do anything for us if it is his will that He can fix our problems, resolve our situations, that He can give us the petitions of our hearts. And all we have to do is surrender all these things to God by praying to Him about every concern we have. Let us humble ourselves before God and let Him take care of our life. And before we even start to complain to God, start to cry out to Him, question Him, be angry at Him for the troubles and inconveniences we have, Let's not forget to thank Him for what He has given us before. Don't you feel unappreciated when you give someone your time and effort and love and when they don't get what they expect from you one time, they lash out on you or they judge you or even label you? Or what about the times you've given others so much grace for their lack in character, their shortcomings, their disrespect, or whatever it may be, and when you are not perfect, they don't make the time to understand you? We all want to feel appreciated. We all want to feel loved. And God does too. God does limitless things for us that no one else can do for us. Even the things we don't know that God does to protect us and guide us, God blesses us each day with our life, with love, with our body, with our intelligence. There are so many things to be thankful for, yet we forget that these things are gifted by God. Like how we forget that each breath we take is a gift from God. Even for the one big thing that God did for the world, the one big thing that we should always be thankful for, for eternity, is that He offered His only Son to us and atoned for our sins with Jesus' life. 
we cannot let ourselves be angry or sad or have tantrums for when we don't have things go our way. Even when nothing will ever go our way for the rest of our lives, Jesus' sacrifice is more than enough to be thankful for because if not for him, we would all be sent to hell for we are all sinners. And that is step number three. And for the last step, it is to tell God what we need. That's it. Just like in step two, just tell God what is in our mind, what is in our hearts. We ask God for what we need and even what we want, for the biggest and even the littlest things. God's answers to our prayers and petitions will depend on what his will for your life is. God will always do everything for the good of us and for his glory. If he thinks it will do us harm, he will either use it to test our character or plainly say no. God protects us not from getting our feelings hurt, but from us falling to our death, meaning eternity in hell. If we set ourselves to follow Jesus, then their will is what we will also. So when we ask God about something, we should already contemplate over what God's potential will for us is. As we grow in Jesus' path, our prayers will start to change from prayers of worldly desires like, oh, I pray for new shoes or a new car, or oh, I pray to get rich, to prayers of knowing his will, prayers of impacting the world with God's truth, petitions of being a vessel to others. Jesus sees us more valuable than the birds, the flowers, the earthly flora and fauna, and yet we see them survive and bloom, and we sometimes even wish we were just like the carefree birds or the calm cats. If we keep our minds and thinking that this is in our homeland, and that heaven is, then we will worry less about the things of this world. We will worry less about becoming rich and owning properties or having the best career. We will understand that heaven is where we can do all things we couldn't do here on earth. Because the most valuable thing I am longing for is to be able to spend eternity with my Father in heaven. Wouldn't you want that too? Those are the four steps to having peace, my friends. And don't forget, seek the Holy Spirit of what God is telling you and write your prayer down at the bottom of your page. Thanks for watching. Remember, you are loved and you are loved all the more by Jesus.